extra distance than the other wave. This is scenario number one. Okay, write down. So there are two waves. Okay, when they start, there is no phase difference. At start, there is no phase difference. Okay, but what happens is one wave travels extra. So this wave travels L1 and this wave travels only L2. Sorry, this wave travels L2 and this travels only L1. And then they both meet. Okay, so we, I am not drawing as if these two are meeting. You could have drawn like this, you know, that one ray goes like, other ray goes like this. So this travels more distance than that. Okay, so rather than drawing like this, I am just putting it as a straight line. Fine. So, whether these two waves meet or not, let's <coughs> try to understand this scenario. So when this, these two waves start, one and one dash, there is no phase difference. You have to find out phase difference. When this point reaches here, this is 2 <coughs> and this is also, let's say this is 2 dash. Between 2 and 2 dash, what is the phase difference? In terms of L1, L2 and wavelength of the wave, lambda. Find out. Same, frequency. These are the two coherent sources. Even wavelength is same. Medium is same and the speed of light is so frequency is same, the wavelength also becomes same, the velocity is same. Okay, should I do it? 
So every lambda will give 2 pi of phase difference. Fine. So L1 distance will give how much phase difference? <coughs> 2 pi by lambda into L1. L2 distance will give how much phase difference? 2 pi by lambda into L2. Fine. So phase difference will be what? 2 pi by lambda into L2 minus L1. What is L2 minus L1? Path difference. You get this? Always remember this. One wavelength corresponds to 2 pi phase. And 2 pi phase corresponds to one wavelength. Why this relation is important? Because you will see that when you solve questions, it becomes easy to calculate the path difference. You can put a scale and measure how much path one wave has traveled. But it becomes difficult to find out the phase difference directly. But the formulas are in terms of phase difference. So first you calculate the path difference and then using that path difference you find out the phase difference and then put in the formula. Did it? Is this thing clear? Any doubt on this? Suppose initially itself there is a phase difference of 5. As in this one dash is ahead of 1 by 5. So total phase difference will be how much? This plus 5. Simple. Are you getting this? Suppose this is ahead of 5. This one. Then what is the phase difference? This minus 5. Getting it? Okay. Suppose. What? Suppose, see right now these two have the same phase. Whatever phase event happens is just because this has traveled more distance. Suppose initially itself there is a phase difference of 5 1. Okay, so total phase event will be phase difference due to the extra path plus initial phase difference. Fine. Now if this has more phase than this initially, then since this has traveled extra path, so phase difference due to extra path minus however much this was already ahead will be the total phase. Okay. So this is a scenario. Now tell me this. If this has already traveled, suppose this point is uh, 3 dash. Okay. 1 and 3 dash, there is no phase difference. And this distance is suppose y. Then what is the phase difference between 2 and 2 dash? Are you getting my question here? Earlier I said between this and this there is no phase difference. Now I am saying between this and this there is no phase difference. This distance is y and this distance is l2. Now what? So 2 by l2 plus y minus l2. Correct. Are you getting a hang of it? Okay. Now no problem. Scenario 2. No, I mean I missed a little bit here. Let's, so we have found out that 2 pi by lambda into delta x. This is the path difference. Sorry, this is the phase difference between the two waves. If one wave travels delta x more than the other wave. Okay. When this is equal to 2n plus 1 pi, what should happen? Destructive difference. Destructive difference will happen. Fine. So I get a condition for delta x. So when delta x equal to n plus half times lambda, destructive difference will happen. Fine. The earlier condition was in terms of phase difference. Now I am getting condition in terms of path difference itself. Fine. And suppose 2 pi by lambda into delta x, when this becomes n times pi, what should happen? Constructive interference. So this, suppose this is 2 n pi, then constructive interference. Delta x should become n times lambda. This is 
constructive. Get it? Okay. Now this is only for the case one of the scenario one. Fine. Path, sorry, phase difference happens to be this. If phase difference is something else, then that something else should become equal to this. Getting it? Okay. Write down scenario two. Sir, what else? Ha, tell me. Sir, when you see the difference of two waves, and if delta x is equal to 2n plus 1 by 2 lambda, we see a destructive difference. Yeah, it is destructive difference. This is how it is. See, you might have already seen destructive differences. Like for example, have you ever seen uh, oil spilled on the surface of water and when you walk near that, you will see the color changes and at some angle it becomes completely dark and then it becomes completely bright. Have you observed it? Right? So when it becomes completely dark, there was destructive difference happening. When it becomes completely bright, there is constructive difference happening. And when you see colors, for some colors it was destructive and for some color it is constructive. Okay? So we will learn all that little bit later. Right now, let's talk about scenario 2. In scenario 2, you have two waves traveling same distance, but suppose this is one and let us say this is one dash they are traveling same distance and meeting this is two this is two dash but the lower wave travels a small distance in a refractive index mu let us say this is t distance okay total distance is l and l fine you have to find out what is the phase difference, if any, between 2 and 2 dash? Okay? Get it out? I'll just uh, talk about and then I'll leave it to you. So when wave reaches here, after this what will happen? Velocity goes down. Velocity goes down? What about wavelength? What about wavelength? What will remain constant in the medium? Frequency, Frequency remains constant. The velocity goes down, what happens to wavelength? Wavelength will? What is frequency? V is equal to mu lambda. V is equal to? Mu lambda. So if mu has to be constant, which is V by lambda, velocity goes down, wavelength also goes down. So the scenario will be something like this and then you come out. This wavelength and this wavelength will be same, but this will be different. Refractive index is given as mu. Okay? Find out phase effect between 2 and 2 dash. Okay. Now, between 1 and 1 dash, there is no phase difference. Suppose you draw a line like this. What about between this point and this point? Any phase difference? No phase difference. Because from here to here, the scenario is same from here to there. Okay? But then if you draw this line, will there be a phase difference between this point and this point? Yes. There will be. Now, suppose that phase difference is 5. Will that phase difference change after this point till here? So between these two phase difference is suppose theta. And between these two is 5. Is this equal to this or not? It will be same. Fine. Because after this wavelength is same, it is two coherent sources. Phase difference won't depend on time. Getting it? So whatever the phase difference between 3 and 3 dash, that is the phase difference between 2 and 2 dash. So our quest here is, what is the phase difference? This two point. Right. So first let us try to find out what is the phase difference between, let's say this is 4 and 4 dash. Between 3 and 4, what is the first phase difference? Theta 1 is what? 2 pi by lambda into t. Isn't it? Lambda is 2 pi. So this is what? This is t. So but this phase is 2 pi by lambda into t. Okay? What about this phase? 
theta 2, how much 3 dash is ahead of 4? 2 pi by lambda by mu into t. So this is 2 pi by lambda mu times t. Okay. So what is the phase difference between these two? 2 pi by lambda into mu minus 1 into t. Are you getting it? Fine. Now, do you see that this particular thing inside the box behaves as if it is a path difference? If path difference is delta x, phase difference is 2 pi by lambda into delta x. Fine. So, this behaves as if it is a path difference, but actually there is no path difference, but it behaves as if it is. Fine. So, we name this particular thing as optical path difference. Write down optical path difference is mu minus 1 into t. Fine. Find out. Okay. So, let's discuss the cases of scenario 2. This thing is clear, right? Any doubt on this? No. So, again, whatever phase difference you got, that phase difference, if it is equal to 2 and pi, constructive. If it is equal to 2 and plus 1 into pi, it is destructive. So, we will not go into that now. So, suppose you have another thing here. So, this is T1 mu1, this is T2 mu2. Now, what is the phase difference between 2 and 2 dash? Tell me. 2 pi by lambda times 2 and 2 mu1 to mu1 minus p. So, 2 pi by lambda mu1 minus mu2. Okay. So, there will be optical part difference of 2 pi by lambda mu1 minus 1 times t due to the lower one and upper one there will be optical part difference, optical phase difference, sorry, of this much. Fine. So, the total phase difference will be upper one minus lower one or lower minus upper one. Any doubt on this? Okay. So, when this total becomes 2 and pi, constructive difference and when this total becomes 2 and plus 1 pi, destructive difference. Ready again? Now, suppose this travels extra distance. Suppose this is L1 and this is L2. Now, distances are not the same. Then what is the path? Sorry, phase difference between let us say this is 2 dash, 2 and 2 dash. In case number 3 of scenario, what is Mu minus 1 into t. This is optical path difference. Okay? Optical path is mu into t. Mu into t is optical path. It's like subtracting mu t. Subtracting t from mu t. Fine. So, if a wave travels in a medium mu, it will be as if it has traveled mu into t distance. Are you getting it? Now do this. Tell me the path difference first. So, path difference is what? M1 plus u1 minus u1 into p1 minus L2 plus M2 minus 1 into p2. Total path difference will be optical path difference plus actual, plus actual path difference. Optical path difference is how much? mu1 minus 1 into t1 minus mu2 minus 1 into t2. Is this correct? Fine. Lower one has travelled <coughs> this much more. Upper one has travelled that much more. So this is optical path difference. Ready? Fine. So I am taking extra part travelled by the lower one as positive. Fine. Plus actual part difference L1 minus L2. This is the total part difference. When this total path difference becomes equal to N lambda, what will happen? Constructive difference. Getting it? And when this equals to N plus half times lambda, destructive difference. Fine? So, like this, there can be so many different kinds of scenario. We have discussed only selective few, which are which
which occurs more and more. Okay? There can be scenario that the entire experiment is conducted inside water. Then what will happen? What change will happen? The one will be one will be one point. Water will change the wavelength first of all. Wavelength becomes lambda by mu. Fine? So wherever lambda is, it becomes lambda by mu. What else? This mu1, you can't take mu1 now, right now. You have to take mu1 by mu of water. Right now it is in air, so you are doing mu1 divided by mu of air, which is 1. Now when you put it in water, it becomes mu1 divided by mu of water. Are you getting it? So like this, there can be so many different scenarios. It is not discussed in some book, but I thought I could share a few you know, best practices that you can follow while solving the